I want to talk about now that you pretty much at this time you were two years in. Outside of learning the environment, did you have any similar struggles from Critical Start? Or this time you just like ready? It's like, I did this before. This is like, <clears throat> I don't want to say cake, but when you come to just like an internal environment versus worrying about different things you may be looking at at one place, it's a little bit easier because you can focus more. Yeah, but it was also, like, it had different struggles. Uh, like, the struggles were probably like learning the systems. Like, because when you're working for MDR, MSSP, you're like, you don't you don't really touch their like, you know, ticketing system and stuff like that. Sometimes some people do, but like you don't really, like you don't touch as much and in, like their internal personal stuff. Like and so what? like just different internal things, like only what internal users would touch. You know, like in that, and it's kind of confusing because it's, it's different, different for everybody. Yeah, because I know it's like an opt- we had like access to like a lot of crap. Like that's why I like that. That contract so much. Yeah. Like, we literally were like their, you know, that level one and two guys. And yeah. then we work hand in hand with that IR team. Yeah, that's true. It's different for every, I mean, for every company. And um, yeah, but I can't say MDR is different too, though, mm-hmm. because you're really focused on alerts. Uh, you're not focused on managing their sock or managing, right. you know what I mean? So, but, uh, but it's crazy though, because uh, like, with the with the one I'm at now, my, like it just took off. Like yeah. I just soared, man, to the to the heights because, like, I put two and two together. Like, I had to, I had, I had a better vision of what security looked like because I'm internal now. I'm not external. I'm in the house, you know. Like, you know, I'm in Big Mama's house. Like, this yeah. is in the, I'm we cooking in the kitchen. I'm seeing how she's working versus like I'm looking out, you know, from the window. No, I'm in the kitchen. You know, so like it's totally different, uh, and man, like it's just amazing, man. It just you just kind of take off. You start touching a lot of different things. You start, you know, you want to do projects or whatever. It's just awesome. I'll tell you right now because we I have I've been so busy, so I haven't been actually. But like right now, just make sure you start. If you haven't, write all those things you're doing down. The reason why you're taking off, and because I know a little bit of background about your role, is because you guys took over. For something. So it's kind of like y'all started from the ground up. So what seems like, even though you've been there like close to a year, is really like two to almost three years of experience because of so many different moving parts. Because that's how it was when I was on the contract at Optum. It was like, we took over for another supplier and kind of had to almost scrap everything and kind of just change stuff as we went. And so like they still got the contract now because of that work we did. But you started... This don't make sense. This don't look right. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing that? So now when I go to other places and I'm like, why are y'all doing it like this? This don't make sense. Like, there's a simpler way to do this. Why are we doing it like this? Why do we have this in place and not utilizing it for what we need it for? Yeah. And the managers and managers are so crucial because they are the ones that get you the access. They are the one that fight for you when you can't fight for yourself. And then talk about the good thing about having technical managers. Yeah. Some people aren't technical managers, which is cool, but I do feel when you work in SOC, when you work in IR, you need somebody that's been in the trenches before. Maybe they haven't been in the trenches in a while, but you need somebody to kick that muscle memory in and say, hey, did you check for this? Did we do this? When it comes to investigation, a lot of times, like, your manager may be the, the incident commander, but you are the responder. So you're they're dictating, okay, I need you to go check this, check this, check this, check this. Oh, did you get this? Or a lot of times, like, oh, I'm already on it. I got it. They'll be like, thanks. Those are things you need. That's how you start learning. When some of the things you were talking about, about, hey, hijacking email threads and kind of making, tricking somebody you guys probably do business with, thinking that they're you, like putting like the typo squad domains and stuff up, man, it happens all the time. So right now, what's your what's your tool stack like right now that you use? Man, I I don't want to be specific with it, but we use a lot of different tools. I mean, they are... I mean, I don't think it like... No, nobody knows who we're talking about. So I'm just like, like you know, most places they, they use like a, where they use a Sentinel, they use a Splunk, they use a CrowdStrike, a Tanium, or Carbon Black, you know. Like, and I'm only doing it just because maybe somebody hears a tool that they're interested in so they can like say, oh, I, I, I went and go learn such and such because I watched the podcast with Carlos and Henry. So it's like one of those things. Right, right. Yeah, but but I, I, I want to just keep it general because... You okay. Know. Let, well, say like I guess you guys use like EDR tools and stuff like that. Yeah. So we use EDR. We use a lot of cloud-based uh, tools. We use uh, obviously our our seam, our SOAR, and uh, 
Yeah, but those are like the main things where it's like, you know, and you got your vulnerability management tools. But, you know, even just keeping it in general, like, you know, those those categories again, it's like, yeah, we use like all those different things and and um yeah. Yeah. And I w- I'm willing to bet like your biggest alerts are probably like fishing related, aren't they? No. They're not. They're not? <laughs> yeah, they're not. Uh they are because I don't primarily work with fishing. I do I do help out, but that's not primarily what I what I work with. So a lot of them. Well, that, not primarily. I was saying like, well, not necessarily fishing. Like what you were t- what we were talking about earlier is just like nine times out of ten, the end user is the person that's possibly causing the issues more than like most of the time. The technologies did most of their job, unless it's a compliance issue and something that yeah. has some protection on it. Yeah. So it's like usually like um, a user, you know, downloading something or mm-hmm. clicking. I mean, I mean, obviously clicking on something and yeah, like those are just. I mean. Dude, I think security will always exist because the bad guys always try to find a way to make it more confusing, even with AI. No, they're you gonna know, find a way to use AI to you know the hardest one to account for right now, <clears throat> and I think it's because of people not paying attention, is uh QR codes. Interesting. I hadn't thought about that. Because you think about it, if a attacker finds somebody in your org's email and say, hey, so-and-so, you know, you need to set up, you know, two-factor authentication. And they kind of make it look like a Microsoft or, or something or like Okta. And the person takes their phone out, whether it's a work phone, personal phone, they scan it. On the network, we don't know that they visited it. Not yet until they, unless they start browsing stuff with a secure browser or whatever you got, MDM profile you got on there. So now, whatever's happened, we're going to be late to the party. And then that's when you're going to have to reverse and say, hey, okay, what happened? Oh, yeah, I scanned this QR code and this. And so now in the environment, you're going to hopefully have to try to block that and see what's going on. Did somebody start doing, like, I, I worked on some where, like, there's a MFA fraud where somebody is trying to log in somebody's thing. So they have, like, been compromised where what happens is, and this is, like, always user base. They are calling into the help desk acting like somebody else. So they were able to get MFA put on their device. And so now they're trying to log in. Dang. But the other person realizes, hey, that's not me, and raises a ticket. And then that's what starts our investigation. And so those are the fun things. And that's why I say based on your environment, it depends on how much fun you'll have. And that's the reason why when people yeah. ask about the blue team at IER, it's like, that's where Dude, it's It can get really fun too. And I mean, and the way things come in are different. Like you will have alerts. Sometimes you'll have threat intel tell you, hey, yeah. we found this. We got these different uh, tools in our environment, and this is what we need to jump on. Yeah. And Or it may be social media. Yeah, you, you know? see, <laughs> I mean, all these different threats and stuff that's been coming in with all these different vulnerabilities just in Q1 alone have been crazy. And you have your threat intel working on it. Hey, let's go see if we, if we have anything we're susceptible to this. Are we using this? Okay, hey, we don't need to use this anymore. Why do you need to use it? You know, why are you using your machines to go visit these non-malicious sites? All different type of stuff that you work on with 